Hello, this is Chetan Dalal here. In this episode, I am going to talk about a new method of investigation. I am sure many of you must have performed investigations using different methods. But most of these methods that we use are subjective and judgmental. I am now going to talk about a scientific and a mathematical method which is being researched even as of date across the world. This particular method is based on a theorem propounded by a person called Benford and it is known as Benford's theorem. It is one of the most novel ways of performing any data analytics. Why am I recommending this particular method? The reason is simple friends. Today's world, volumes are huge. Today a million transactions is no big deal. No other subjective method can probably give a forensic investigator the ability to analyze, evaluate and assess that data. Therefore, new methods have to be researched and one of the methods that we have come across which we find very useful and worth considering as one of the many different approaches in performing an investigation. For this purpose, I have a colleague. His name is Mahesh Bhatki. He is also a very senior chartered accountant. He is a part of our investigation team. He is also a chartered accountant, a forensic accountant and a CSA. And he will tell us a little more about how important it is to use Benford's law as also the fact that it is a very simple method to use and very interesting to learn about. Well, Chetan Bhai, thank you for this opportunity. And uh, now this is very important for any investigation that apart from subjective, any objective way of looking at things will pinpoint him and give a proper direction. And as correctly said by you, it's a very simple law, something which is revolutionary and something which is available to any auditor or any investigator. And from that perspective, it is very useful. Now, what is Benford's law? Benford's law is about appearance of digits. And what is appearance of digits? Let me narrate to you a small anecdote that really explains what this appearance of digit means. There was one professor somewhere in some part of the world and once he wanted to find out how many of his students are honest and who can be dependable and they really do something behind the back of that professor. So what he did was he gave them a very simple exercise to do. He told them that when you go home today, you take a paper, take a coin and you have to toss the coin about 200 times and write down the answers whether it is a head or a tail. Now it was a very simple exercise and uh, something that anyone could have done very easily. But yet some students when they went home, some students did it diligently, they really took a coin, you know, made 200 tosses and wrote down the answer correctly. And then there were some students who said that where well, professor is going to come and look at what we are doing and how will he know whether we are doing it proper or not. So they just fake something that randomly they just wrote head, tail, head, tail and they HHTT or something like that and they came back on the next day. So the next day the professor asked them about the exercise and he collected the answer sheets. And when he collected those answer sheets, just by looking at the paper, he was able to bifurcate that these are the people who have done it really diligently, properly and these are the set of people who have probably faked it. Now, how was he able to do that? Now, some people would say that, okay, he calculated how many times head came, tails came, and you know, the law probably tells us that there's a 50% chance, etc. So he could have done based on that. Some people could say that, okay, it was something where he analyzed the behavioral uh, uh, writing, where you know, the way you write, because when you toss, you know, it will not come in a running handwriting or something like that. But these are again, something which is very subjective. Now we are looking over here, the objective way of looking at things. And do you know friends, there is some cosmic law which says that when you toss a coin 200 times, there is a continuous run of at least, I'm saying at least once or more, where six times in a row, continuously you will get either head or a tail. So somewhere, you know, when you are writing down, you may get H, T, T, H, T, T, and all those things. But somewhere you will have H, 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 T, uh, HH running minimum of six times. So it can be six, seven, eight times also. And that should happen at least once somewhere in this series. Now he was able to check that and I'm sure you can also try it yourself when you are alone, just try and do that. And you will realize that there is some law which says that this really happens. And this is what we have tested. And that is what, uh, based on that, we are convinced that this works. 
So now what does this tell us? This tells us that there is some law besides what we are aware about and this is again something which is a cosmic truth and based on which it is can be worked out. Now well the professor was able to do that but he was able to do that using an objective test and this is same objective test which Benford's laws gives you when you do an audit or investigation. Many a times when we are in a situation, you would have realized that there is no direction. There are some whistleblower complaints or there are certain issues where they tell us about, you know, something wrong is happening, but you really don't have a direction. So this is a law which gives you a direction to your audit. So what is the Benford's law? As I was telling you, this is about appearance of digits. And this law says that this is appearance of digit notwithstanding the value thereof. That means this law looks at numbers just as numbers and it does not place any values on those numbers. So when we talk about two, it just considers two as just a character and there is no value whether it is two is whether it's a, a currency or whether it's a quantity or there is a volume in that. And from that perspective, it is very easy to understand. So let me bring you into this Benford's law and let me show you how simple it is and how simply it can be applied. Now, let's say you have been given some random about 8, 10, let's say, check payments. Let's say there is some amount which is starting with 125,000, something with 76,000 and so on. So, 5, 6 amounts are given. Now, let's take the first most uh, example. As you can see on the screen, I've just given you about 5 transactions of some check payments that you can see. Now, what Benford's law says is, now suppose if you take the first transaction in that, which is 125,000. Now, what is the leftmost digit in that? The leftmost digit, because Benford's law looks at numbers as the characters, the leftmost digit is number one. So, in this case, it is one number one, and the rest is seven, four, and nine, as you can see on the screen. Now, supposing someone were to ask you, what is the chance of this number one being number one? What will you say? Probably we all driven by, ben, uh, by law of probability so far. So law of probability tells us that all numbers have equal chance of appearing and therefore for the probability for this number 1 to be number 1 is 1 upon 9 which is about 11.11%. .11%. So this is what uh, the law of probability has been telling us but this is where Benford differs and he says it is not 11.11% .11%, but it is 30.1%. Now this is almost like you know what we were knowing about a particular law which was 11% and now here is Benford who says that it is three times more than what you could expect. And not only for number one, he has given you a different uh, frequencies for each number starting with one to nine and uh, it goes on from 30% to 17%, 12% as you can see on the screen. It goes from, a, uh, from 30% to almost like 4.6%. So as you can see, when the numbers increase from 1 to 9, the frequencies or the expected frequencies, the way it will come, keeps dropping. And there is a reducing chart as you can see on the screen. Now, well, there is a technicalities about what it is. So let's not get into those technicalities, but let's see what is there for us. And why do we feel that this works for uh, us as uh, auditors? And uh, we know we have done some research. I will just show you on the screen. Let's say I've taken one particular example of, you know, working on this particular uh, date on the, of, uh, of a particular date on the stock market data. And as you can see, exactly it follows the pattern of those particular Benford's law. And I've not done only for one. I can show you almost something like five days which I picked up a random right from 2014 to 2020. And all these things work exactly as per this as you can see on the screen. So not only in Bombay Stock Exchange, I have gone to let's say something like a New York Stock Exchange. And as you can see, this is a monthly data. And again, as you can see, it perfectly follows the Benford's law pattern. We have also taken data from London Stock Exchange and it's a yearly data. And there also you can see it perfectly follows the Benford's law. So therefore, let's assume for a moment that there is some merit in this law. And having merit in this law, how can we apply? That is something that is important to us. Let me show you a very simple way how it can be used. Let's say uh, we are doing some kind of uh, investigation of let's say some expense vouchers and we have let's say 1000 expense vouchers lying in front of us and we have no direction which particular expense voucher to look forward to. Now as, as, as investigators, auditors, we generally tend to you know pick up at random or some, on some basis we try to pick up some samples. Now this is a law which will tell you that you can pick up a sample based on some kind of a risk 
And what is that risk? That it does not follow Benford's law can be a good risk for you to pick up a sample. So let's see how it can be done. So let's say you have something like 1000 vouchers before you. Now what Benford says is for number one to appear, it is he has given the frequencies right from going from 30% to 4%. So you can expect that out of these 1000 vouchers, about 301 vouchers will start with number one, 176 with number two, 125 with number 3 and so on, going up to 46 vouchers with number 9. Now what Benford says is that when you can expect this voucher or when you can expect that this kind of uh, frequency can be there, now he is empowering you to forecast what can happen. And therefore, if you can forecast something, what you can simply do is you can compare it with the actual and find out what is the difference. Now if the difference, wherever the variance is higher, now this is the area where you can pick up your samples because what it means is that these are the area or this is a bucket where the numbers has not followed the natural uh, progression that you should have and therefore this is the area where something wrong has happened. So what Benford says is that anything that is not natural will not follow this Benford's law pattern and therefore you can look at those area. And why you need to look at those area? Because if it is not natural, it has become unnatural. And how it will become unnatural? Because of some human influence on that. Now that human influence can happen due to A, because of some policy decision, in which case it may be rightly done, or it could be because of errors, because, due, because of the errors, certain numbers have gone into certain direction which it shouldn't have gone. And third, of course, for which what we are sitting over here for, it is for the fraudulent activities. So whether it is error or fraud, as investigators, as auditors, you are definitely uh, uh, mindful about that and this is something that you need to look at. So uh, simply this kind of things can give you a world of information or world of guidance in terms of you know, going in a particular direction. Now, you know, we have been using this for a very long time and it has really given us a good uh, results. You know, there was a case when we were looking at one restaurant uh, uh, billings and there also again, there was some kind of a whistleblower complaint saying that something wrong is happening, but you know, the auditors, the management and you know, all those people were looking at it. They were not really able to get to the real crooks where the problem was. And this Benford's law gave us a direction. What had happened was in that particular case, number one, because you know, uh, as Benford said, it should be 30%. But there actually what we observed was it was something like 15, 18%, around 15 to 18% per month. Now that was something very strange. And especially when we, you know, uh, corroborated that number one, because, you know, we realized after, you know, doing some kind of uh, uh, activity uh, audit or, you know, understanding a little bit more about the transactions at that, that there were certain menu items where there was a fast moving item, you know, like the mini lunch and, you know, some of the cakes. And these were the items which was placed at price at about 100 with uh, number one coming uh, more often. So that was very intriguing that, you know, you know, generally this uh, restaurant was in a business area. A lot of people came in once. Of course, it is two or three, probably the number becomes larger. But when we observed that, you know, the customers who were coming regularly were single and the one actually should have been more than what Benford should have been saying. But yet this was something which was lower. And when, of course, we went in little more uh, uh, detail, it was realized that actually the cashier was doing a fraud. You know, Chetamaya, what he was doing? Uh, he was actually in that billing module, he had his own billing software and some of the uh, billing he was generating in his own billing, in his own software which was not coming through his normal software which the uh, management had provided and that's how he was able to siphon out some of the monies on a daily basis. But friend, now this is something which we wouldn't have noticed anywhere because all the systems were running properly, all the checks and balances were in the place, all reconciliation, cash, collection, deposits, everything was happening properly. But this is Benford law gave us that particular area where we could have gone and this is how it comes. So friends, this is what Benford's law in, uh, in simplicity means. I'm sure there is a world, uh, if you go to the Google, there will be a lot of uh, sites, there is a lot of, as uh, Chetan Bhai was saying, there is a lot of research which is still going on as we speak and I'm sure you know this will uh, empower you to also take a look at this particular tool. I'm sure if you can do some more research on this you will be able to apply it very uh, very simply and uh, in almost in all cases where you are doing audits. So this is something which you should look at and I'm sure this will help you in your audits and wherever you are doing your, uh, your work. So thank you friends and I hope this will be useful to you. Thank you. Thank you.